Hello, this is uh, Dr. Vasan CJ, final year resident from Mahatma Gandhi Medical College and Research Institute. And uh, my co-author is Dr. Prabhagaran, Aston professor in the same college. And my topic today is role of MRI in non-traumatic angle joint pathologies. So coming to introduction, uh, angle joint is a synovial joint of the lower limb with multiple articulations, ligamentous collections and intricate soft tissue. So MRI plays a major role in identifying the etiology in patients with non-traumatic angle and foot pain. Due to its quick non-invasive imaging, it's a high soft tissue contrast resolution, multiplanar capabilities, free of ionizing radiation and ability to post contrast image. And MRI has the unique cap uh, capability to evaluate the osseous, ligamentous, tendinous, and muscular injuries about the foot and angle with a single imaging study before they become evident in other imaging modalities. And, uh, and these cases are often difficult to diagnose. So the injuries uh, to specific soft tissue structures can be accurately assessed on MRI, allowing appropriate uh, therapeutic intervention and rehabilitation. MRI has also been uh, helpful in the diagnosis of several soft tissue abnormalities that are unique to the foot and ankle, such as osteomyelitis, neuropathic joint, osteoma, uh, ganglion cyst, synovitis, tuberculous arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, and plantar fasciitis. So the aims and objectives of the study are to describe the imaging spectrum in patients with non-traumatic angle and heel pain by MRI, and also to assess the role of MRI in detection of various osseous, ligamentous, and tendinous pathologies of angle in patients with non-traumatic etiology. So coming to the materials and methods, uh, this study was carried out in uh, 28 patients for a period of two years. Uh, written and informed consent was obtained from each patient in the study group. So the inclusion criteria uh, includes patients presenting with clinical symptoms of angle pain, swelling and restriction of movement, but with no history of trauma. Uh, patients with acute and chronic symptoms will be included in the study. Uh, coming to exclusion criteria, patients having history of trauma, patients having a congenital anomalies of ankle, uh, patients who have had angle surgeries, any absolute contraindication for MRI. Uh, MR scan was performed with 1.5 Tesla uh, Philips Achiva uh, using a ded dedicated angle coil. Uh, MRI examination of the angle joint was performed in the axial, coronal, and sagittal sections. The FOV included the entire ankle, uh, that is the hind foot, up to the level of the metatarsal basis. The patient was positioned in supine position with the medial malleolus centered in the coil to evaluate the hind foot and the angle joint. The foot was allowed to rest in a relaxed position, generally in uh, 10 degree to 20 degree of plantar flexion and 10 to 30 degree of external rotation. So coming to the results of the study, the distribution of the patients according to age. Uh, so in this, we can see that uh, the, uh, the age group that has in involved most was from 41 to 50. And the, next to that, the 31 to 40 age group was involved. Coming to the gender distribution of the study participants, uh, this was more frequent in males compared to females. Uh, coming to the duration of the lesion among the study participants, uh, being acute and chronic, most of the participants had chronic symptoms compared to acute. And uh, coming to the distribution of actual cases, so we had the highest number of cases was of osteomyelitis, which was followed by neuropathic joint and then ganglion cyst, tuberculous uh, rheumatoid arthritis and plantar fasciitis. Uh, three cases uh, were present in the study and uh, the least one was tenosynovitis. So in our study, the most common pathology was osteomyelitis. 28% followed by neuropathic joint, ganglion cyst, tuberculous arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, plantar fasciitis, and tenosynovitis. The most common age group affected was 41 to 50 years and more common in males. So, and most of the patients had chronic symptoms than acute. Coming to discussion. So, the first and the most common case was osteomyelitis. So, uh, the pathogenesis was Secondary to hemat uh, hematogenous spread or direct inoculation, the bacterial proliferation within the bone induces an acute suppurative response. So there is accumulation of pus within the medullary cavity, leading to raised intramedullary pressure and vascular congestion, which can uh, disrupt the uh, intraosseous blood supply. 
there is also formation of reactive bone and hypervascular granulation tissue so this continuous accumulation of pus within the medullary cavity and uh, hence going into the subperiosteal space can rupture through the periosteum and then spread onto the uh, soft tissues through a channel which is known as the sinus tract so coming to uh, the case of osteomyelitis so in this mrt1 uh, weighted axial and stir sections of foot shows extensive marrow edema with cortical destruct, uh, destruction and irregular border of the calcaneus and adjacent sinus tract leading uh, to the subperiosteal space and also to the soft tissue structures suggestive of osteomyelitis the uh, second common case was neuropathic joint also known as charcot's joint so uh, inflammatory response from minor injuries uh, that results in osteolysis in the setting of peripheral neuropathy the patient has no sensation uh, the most common pathology or cause being diabetes mellitus so here mr axial t1 weighted and uh, sagittal t1 weighted uh, sections of foot shows extensive destruction of the cuneiform bones and metatarsals suggestive of neuropathic joint in the sagittal and uh, axial we can see there is so much of destruction uh, with uh, surrounding inflammation in the metatarsals and cuneiform bones the next common case was ganglion cyst so uh, generally the ganglion cyst was thought to uh, result from some uh, myxoid degeneration of the connective tissue associated with the joint capsules and tendon sheets uh, they may represent sequelae of synovial herni herniations or coalescence of small degenerative cyst arising from the tendon sheath and joint capsule or bursae so here coronal uh, pro uh, proton density fat sat images and axial t2 weighted images of foot uh, show large subtalar ganglion cyst as we can see here having a uh, fluid uh, fluid intensity uh, coming to rheumatoid arthritis uh, it is a multi system inflammatory disease uh, causing uh, synovial hyperemia which is an indication of acute inflammation synovial hyperplasia looks like a rice bodies and pannus formation there is also decreased thickness of the cartilage and joints so uh, in this case mri uh, coronal and sagittal uh, t2 weighted images of ankle um, shows a hyperindense thickening of the synovial membrane with irregularities of the tibia uh, talus and calcaneus so uh, there is also uh, uh, synovial uh, thickening and uh, uh, hyperplasia which is evident in these pictures coming to uh, plantar fasciitis it is a frequent cause of heel pain uh, and is a low grade inflammatory process involving the plantar aponeurosis with or without involvement of the perifacial structures plantar fasciitis can result from a number of causes which can be mechanical degenerative and and systemic so uh, mri stir and pd uh, fat sat images sagittal show a partial uh, fusiform thickening of the Uh, plantar fascia with uh, adjacent soft tissue edema which is suggestive of plantar fasciitis so coming to co conclusion mri is a excellent non invasive radiation free imaging modality with multiplanar capabilities and excellent soft tissue delineation so mri is very useful in evaluating ankle pathologies having so much of intricate uh, osseous and ligamentous structures and is uh, particularly advantageous for uh, assessing the tendons ligaments nerves fascia and, and and also detecting occult bone injuries with the help of seeing marrow edema so uh, both non traumatic and traumatic pathologies of the ankle and foot can be diagnosed easily by mri so mri provides accurate information regarding the present and uh, presence and extent of infection in diabetic foot and helpful in differentiating neuroarthropathy from osteomyelitis which allows appropriate planning of surgical management mri provides objective assessment of the morphological changes associated with plantar fasciitis as well as in assisting other causes of heel pain thank you and these are my references